I found that my relationship with fashion really changed for a long time because I was just completely overwhelmed with how to participate in it in a sustainable way. Hi, <laughs> I'm Carrie Scott, founder of the Soul Selfs Framework and the author of the upcoming book, Buddha's Closet, Cleaning as a Path to Enlightenment. In the sort of second revision, second round of, of uh, revisions that I made in Buddha's Closet, I introduced a topic of sort of sustainability. I had sort of touched on it originally in the first draft and then um, kind of shied away from it because it's such a big topic, but it's definitely something I've spent a lot of time thinking about in relation to fashion and style and how, you know, what my role is in in relation to sustainability in, in my own wardrobe and in my closet. And today I just thought that I would talk to you a little bit about repairing our clothing and our accessories. Um, I have these shoes that I picked up with a girlfriend down in Parksville a few years back, quite a few years back. Time kind of has a whole new meaning when you reach this age. <laughs> um, and I didn't wear them a lot uh, the first sort of few years that I owned them, but then I gradually wore them more and more and they are definitely now one of my most favorite shoes in my closet, particularly as I go into this new position in an office and uh, feel like I, I need sort of like just your shoes. And so these ones, they really fit the bill. Uh, and what happened with them was the sole on one of them started to come loose. It just came unglued from the rest of the shoe and was sort of flapping around and so I asked my husband if he could glue it back on for me. We have this magic glue in our house called um, shoe goo <laughs> which he's often used uh, to fix his work boots and, and other items in the house and so um, he's kind of a professional at using this stuff whereas I'm not but uh, yeah he he glued the sole of the shoe back on to me so that I can keep wearing it. And I think in the past when something like that would have happened to a shoe, um, I probably would have just thrown it out, got rid of it. But it's starting to kind of make its way back into popular culture again, this idea of mending and repairing and altering our clothes and accessories in order to make them useful for longer. And of course, this used to be the way that we treated all the items in our households, but it's definitely been phased out, I think, by manufacturers um, in order to increase sales. And now we're seeing a resurgence of it um, with people, at least I'm noticing it in, in social media and, and um, yeah, primarily social media in terms of taking an item and giving it new life, whether we're totally re-changing it, totally revamping it, you know, restyling it, or by repairing it, mending it if there's a, like a hole in your sweater, um, patching it in a certain way that gives it more visual interest. And I really... I have to say that I really love this concept of mending and I'm getting used to the idea of repairing because that is um, again like another iteration um, beyond just mending something and I mean I had a whole career for a while built upon reusing and repurposing clothing, vintage clothing and fabrics that were being out of use uh, and remaking them into, into new clothing and, and selling them. And then of course I did my zero waste project, which some of you might be familiar with, where for every 
for an entire year, each week of the year, I created a design, a fashion design or accessory that was made from an entire yard of hemp and cotton fabric. Um, and it's nice to kind of be on the, the other side of all of those projects, so to speak, because I found that my relationship with fashion really changed for a long time because I was just completely overwhelmed with how to participate in it in a sustainable way. I, I got to a point where I, I completely shut down and I didn't want to sew anymore and I, I didn't want to design clothing anymore because it just felt like I was adding to the the problem of textile waste and and not being part of the solution and after taking years to reflect on that I feel like I finally landed in a comfortable place where I've given myself a lot of grace in terms of how I can be sustainable in my in my closet and you know I just do the best that I can and and that means you know fixing things when I can mending things when I can I shop from the clothes that I already own and try and find new and exciting ways of wearing them I don't get rid of as many clothes as I used to I, I mean anything that goes uh, into this donate or the consignment pile has to meet sort of a, a list of criteria first and check all those boxes and then when I bring new items into my closet, which I still love to do, that is still one of my greatest joys, um, the first place that I'm shopping is in thrift stores and consignment stores. And then when it's a, a brand new item, I really, really appreciate it when it is something that's made locally by you know, a local designer. If it's something that is made from uh, natural fibers like silk or hemp and then if it's something that just is it a really unique piece as well so you know I'm, I've put a lot more um, conscious thought into what goes into my wardrobe and how I use the items that I already have in order to create the outfits that I love to wear so yeah just putting that out there this is this is now uh, a little bit more of, of chapter one in Buddha's closet and thinking about sort of you know what your values might be around clothing what your values might be around cleaning out your closet what the intention of cleaning out your closet is when you go into it and and what that looks like over the long run um, I'll talk about this more maybe in another episode of hanger management but I am coming up with this term called slow style. It's it's like slow fashion, but it's sort of how my wardrobe has evolved over time and how my values have really influenced that style as it has evolved. So I'll leave you with that. Please like and subscribe this episode and share it with others if you find it interesting, if it's thought provoking. And I look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks.